Yesterday, as I was working on my homily for today, my daughter asked me, what is it about, Dad? And I answered, well, it's about the desert. Hopefully, it not, it, hopefully it's not too dry. All dad jokes aside, let me ask you, that word desert, what type of images, what words does it bring to mind when you hear it? Hot, barren, bone dry, weathering, lonely, death. These are just a few words one might use to describe the desert. Indeed, as I grew up in West Texas on the edge of the Trans-Pecos Desert, these are words that I frequently heard from visitors to our area. To them, the land where I lived was inhospitable. With extreme heat, very little water, and very little vegetation, they couldn't understand how anyone could survive in the wasteland. Thinking back, I'd have to agree that the land was hot and arid, and at times the area did feel like it was lonely and desolate. However, what many people do not know is that the desert can be one of the most beautiful places on earth. The soil is rich and it's ready to give life. You just have to wait for the rain. When the rain comes, the desert is transformed into a place of abundance life, flowering across the land in one of God's most beautiful landscapes on all the earth. The desert can be a place of loneliness and dread, but it can also be a place of amazing growth and beauty. Today we hear of the desert in our gospel story from Mark. In Mark's much shorter version, we see Jesus being driven out into the desert by the Holy Spirit, remaining there for 40 days while being tempted by Satan. We know that Jesus was able to resist this temptation and he returned from the desert beginning his ministry. However, knowing what a desolate place the desert can be, I often pondered why would the Spirit send Jesus out to such a place? out to that wilderness. Reflecting and thinking about this question, I begin to understand a little bit more. It is in the wilderness, that desert, where Jesus was his most vulnerable. There were no disciples, no companions. There was no house, no food, no water. He was utterly alone. Yet it was at that moment when Jesus was being tempted, when he was at his most vulnerable, that he was able to truly commune with his Father in heaven and begin the ministry that would save the world. We may not know every reason that Jesus entered that desert. We may never know all that transpired as he was there for those 40 days. However, we do know that we can learn from that experience that Jesus shares with us. First, there will be a time when we ourselves find ourselves ushered into the desert by the Spirit if it hasn't happened to us already. It happens to all of us sooner or later. Even deacons and priests enter the desert at times. But when we do that, we often feel that we're in a barren wasteland surrounded by nothing but scorched earth, feeling lonely and seeking something, seeking guidance, seeking some way to find ourselves out of that desert. The why behind our spiritual desert can be for many reasons. Maybe we lost a loved one. Maybe we had a change of jobs. Maybe we were forced to move to a new town. The reasons are endless. And often we find ourselves, though, when we're in that wilderness of trying to survive. We ask ourselves, why did God leave us? Why did he abandon us? We wonder if we did something wrong. Maybe we weren't worthy of God's love. We wonder if we did something to cause God to leave us. To be honest, these are natural feelings to have when we're feeling lonely, when we feel isolated. But let me assure you, none of these, none of these are true. We are there in the desert because we're waiting for the rain. Let me pause here just a moment. As Father Lido likes to remind us, God is good and all the time. God is good good all the time. And and as such, he keeps the promises that he's made to us. One of those is that he will be with us everywhere we are for all times. Deuteronomy 31 says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. In Joshua, we hear, be strong and courageous. 
do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. And it's not just in the Old Testament, but the New Testament as well. Chapter 13 in the book of Hebrew, God tells us that he will never forsake us or abandon us. And the last line in Matthew's gospel says, And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. So God is always with us, even when we're called out to the wilderness of our spiritual life. So why are we called out to the desert in periods of our lives? If God's with us, why would he lead us there? The Spirit leads us out to the desert because God is calling to us. He's wanting to converse with us, to talk to us. And as hard as it seems, we, mankind in general, encounter God when we too are at our most vulnerable, when we have nothing left to support ourselves. It is in that moment that we must give everything over to God. And as we do, those rains begin. It is then that God is able to talk to us, lead us, guide us, and give us the understanding of His will as that of our own. Remember, we must go through Kadesh, the wilderness, to become Kadosh, or holy. Now, there's one more thing to understand about our gospel story today. Jesus spent 40 days out in the desert and then returned to begin his ministry. Within scripture, that number 40 represents something special. It represents new life, a rebirth into something different from your old self. When we venture out into the wilderness, God is using that time that isolation, those trials that we have to endure, he's using those to let the rains come. He cocoons us with his love, transforming us, transforming us into something new, something that we don't understand or see, because just like a caterpillar, it's hard to see that transformation, that change, as we're actually going through it. But as we come out of the desert, we are like butterflies born into something new, something greater than what we were before. And while the thought of entering a desert might be frightening at times, we must follow God's calling so that he can transform us into the people that he knows us to be. We have now entered into the season of Lent, a season of reflection, a season of reconciliation, and a season of penance. We have symbolically entered the desert. There are 40 days until Easter to turn our attention to God and allow Him to transform us. It is here in the desert we must ask ourselves, where is God calling me? What is God needing me to do? What is God asking of me? To whom is God sending me? These are questions we must answer and sometimes the answers are scary. Understand this though, God will never ask more of you than you can handle. Now that's not to say that the change will be easy. God will stretch us as much as he can, but he will never, never break us. So brothers and sisters, let us joyfully go out into the desert this Lenten season. Let us prepare our hearts to receive God. Let us pray that his will be our will too, and let us wait for the rains to come.